Okay guys, we're going to a guy acting like a fax machine. Oh yes, I like that. And welcome to episode number six of the Comedological Report. We're back this week. It's me, Joey Only, with over in Hamilton, Dylan Atak, and of course, uh, in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Frankie McDonald, the man, and our special guest also in Hamilton tonight, Pete Diakowski, 10 years with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and appear on Jeopardy, once named Canada's Smartest Man on CBC. Pete, are you Canada's Smartest Man? Oh, Absolutely. That's, we got the world's, we got Canada's smartest man on. As, if, you, if you count winning a CBT TV show as the criteria, then yes. So uh, let's get started with the weather first before we move on to the meet tonight. Frankie, how's the weather in Nova Scotia right now? Cold, but really windy outside in, in Sydney, Nova Scotia, Canada. As for British Columbia, it's going to bring a lot of rain to the west coast of British Columbia on Monday and a Tuesday. Yeah, we got the uh, Pineapple Express going on huge right now. Hey, uh, Sean, how's the uh, weather down there in Saturno Island today? Quick snapshot of the Zaterna Island weather from about uh, 125 feet up in the air here. Uh, it's been really windy today, but uh, we lucked out and knocked the top off without uh, any real problems. That's Sean Cavers, my friend down in Saturna Island, British Columbia. Hey, Mr. Awesome, I see it's a little warmer in Saskatchewan right now. How's the old seasonal affective disorder treating you there? Hey, everyone. Roy here. Out in the town in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, it is minus 3 with a wind chill of minus 10, a.k.a. sweater weather. I just got my taxes done. I bought myself can open a spatula. Feels pretty good today. Clogging up. I just ate some stale popcorn, so I'm gonna go take care of this tummy ache. Back to you, Joe. Love you, brother. Want to see this cool thing I got this week, Frankie? It's gonna help me a lot with weather videos. That means, and then that means it's gonna bring more rain in Sydney, Nova Scotia on Tuesday. Yeah. More rain and. West coast of British Columbia. The west coast of British Columbia. How about Hamilton, Ontario? Do you have the Hamilton weather report? Well, in Hamilton, it's going to be, it's going to snow 5 to 10 centimeters overnight tonight and into tomorrow. So, P and I are going to be shoveling, uh, shoveling our drive race tomorrow morning. You've got to see a, the size of my snow fort, Dylan. It's huge. It's uh, Pineapple Express big time right now. There's like 40 centimeters uh falling in parts near Revelstoke and places like that in BC right now. Warning still in effect. It's been heavy. Uh, check this out. The only thing I don't have for my new fancy map, guys, is uh, a pointer. So maybe I'd have to just, you know, go <laughs> down on it. Oh, West Coast! The closest hockey team to your area, Joey, is Prince George Krugers. Yep, they are. And uh, they haven't been very good for a long time. Uh, the kids and I go see Quinnell games. But uh, that's just, uh, <laughs> but still, for 10 bucks, it's a great way to spend your day. So, Peter, I imagine spending this much time, yes. having been an outdoor worker, working in football, and being Canada's smartest man, you must have quite a perspective on the weather. I love the weather. I enjoy the weather on a daily basis. But I'll say, I, I always joke that I was a seasonal laborer you know, for uh, my 10 years with the Cats, and then I had one final year with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yes. And those 11 years, yeah, the Durs, I experienced just about everything you could on a football field. Here in Hamilton, we'll get in the summertime that hot, muggy humidity. You know, not that much uh, cooler than the extremes that I experienced in college. I played my college football down at LSU in Louisiana, down on the bayou, and there it is hot, it's humid. I mean, well, you want to talk about, about heat. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that. But in Hamilton... Hey, Joey, in your area, you'll get dry heat in the summertime, not the humidity. You'll well, get the dry the heat. Uh, like I can tell you, the humidity in Ontario, it's just, it's unbearable. And it's that four o'clock in the morning when you're, you know, on top of your cover is just suffering still. 
you know, when will this end in Saskatchewan then? I mean, you must have seen some uh, pretty gnarly storms. Uh, you ever have a game get canceled or postponed? Oh, the storms, the beautiful prairie skies. We had one incredible postponement. I've had a couple of delays, but the craziest one was in Winnipeg. And it was when I was with Hamilton and we were playing out in Winnipeg. And we were delayed about three hours, three and a half hours starting the game. We were playing past uh, past midnight when it finally wound up. Dylan, you remember that one? I remember that one, yes. It was just thunderstorm after thunderstorm, and they kept having lightning strikes. They kept delaying it. So the prairie weather is wild. And I experienced the coldest t- temperature ever on the football field in Regina, in practice for the Grey Cup in 2013, on the first day of the week for practice, day one practice, it hit minus 42. <laughs> and we went on the football field. We didn't win that game. So that hindsight, that might not be the best uh, the best practice. Dylan, you remember that one, right? I remember when everyone was playing chakras in the locker room, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a little extreme. That's and then between that, we've had... When the coach makes you run to puke your guts out, you're doing it because it's just so frigging cold. We just had minus 33 or something here last week. And uh, last week, Ooh. last year, January, we had minus 41. We have a new person who's actually jumped on here, Riley. And uh, so this is Dylan. Dylan's invited you on the show. So I'm going to get Dylan to introduce you. Hi, Riley. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. R- Riley, Riley's good friends with Frankie and I. She's a, fr- she's a fan of Frankie's. Mm-hmm. Long time fan. Yes, long time fan. Yeah, it's great to be on here with you guys too. Where do you live, Riley? Uh, Chicago right now. I'm going to school in Chicago. Well, how's the weather been there this uh, last week? Not good. It's been very snowy and very cold. <laughs> Whereas when you're in Chicago and places like that, then you get a, you get blizzards and winter storms in a way that we just, it's it's a lot more miserable. And I was also, hey, Peter, I was also in Hamilton. I'm from Vancouver originally, so I was, I grew up in BC, so I was still living out in British Columbia back then. So we swapped, we switched uh, provinces, Joey. But I've heard the stories, and of course, 99 was a magical year in Hamilton, because that is, uh, sadly, the last time the Cats won the Grey Cup. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was the 99 Grey Cup. It was in Vancouver at BC Place. Did, you didn't feel like you wanted to move back to BC once you got kind of settled in Hamilton. Talking to you, it became Peter. home. They loved the the football team so much here. It was very welcoming. I got to play on the same team for a decade that few people get to do, and I made a great friend in Dylan and many mm-hmm. other uh, great friends like him. So it's tough to leave. I mean, Dylan, as well as being a friend, is also my official cat sitter. So whenever yes. we go on vacation, Dylan looks after our cats for us. <laughs> Pete, yeah. tell us the time when you were on Jeopardy. I, wa- I was on Jeopardy once, bronze medalist. <laughs> got to meet my idol, Alex Trebek. Uh, Alex Trebek, uh, you know, rest in peace, sadly uh, passed away uh, not too long ago. He's from Sudbury, Ontario, so a great Canadian. And in Sudbury, he grew up a Tiger Cats fan. So right. when I went down to the show, after the show, we got to talk and he was telling me all the stories growing up in Sudbury. He also mentioned the weather a couple of times because Sudbury is a place that, uh, that can have some extreme weather. But we uh, yeah. we talked football. He played football in high school uh, growing up and he had a lot of uh, fond memories of the cats from that era. P, what place did you come in in Jeopardy? Bill, why do you got to keep asking that? Third place. But, yeah. but I had fun. And they say the toughest thing is just getting on the show. <laughs> Tell Joey the time when we had canvas when we canvas I can't help you on your campaign. I ran in the election uh back in 2019, the federal election. And I also came in third place, much like Jeopardy. <laughs> but Dylan was one of my top canvassers. So I had him going door to door to door with me. And we met, didn't we meet some wonderful people, Dylan? We did. Politics brings out a lot of passions uh, in people, very rarely, but every so often uh, we would have someone a little upset that we were on their doorstep. (laughs) And one time, and you know, Dylan, I mean, no one cannot love Dylan. I mean, if you know Dylan, you know, he's a guy you just love to love. One time, someone slammed the door on Dylan. If you no. Believe. If I ever campaign again, Dylan, you'll be number one on my canvas team. Frankie, maybe we can get you out to Hamilton for some canvassing if we ever do that again. We'll, we'll see if my wife will let me. 
And tell them, tell them when I uh, jump bandwagon on you, though, Pete. Oh, so <laughs> guys, be careful uh, because, you know, Frankie, Joe, you guys have a great show going on with Dylan, right? Yeah. You think he's committed uh -huh. to you. <laughs> I thought Dylan was committed to my campaign. So I was running as the conservative candidate in Hamilton. And one day, Dylan didn't show up. He didn't show up for our door knocking. And then I see on his social media, he's tweeting photos with Justin Trudeau, who had come to town for a liberal campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so my number one canvasser is just, just having a nice big hug with our prime minister. <laughs> but I forgave him. Tell us about Madeline, Dylan. She's another fan of Frankie's. And she's in Iowa. When you get to Prince Rupert from Wells, you have to go up to Highway 97. Went to get to Prince George, make a left to Highway 16, keep heading westbound on Highway 16 to get to Prince Rupert, British Columbia. And then in Mass, it's in the, it's in the Guyway Islands, formerly Queen Charlotte Islands. If you want to go up to Yukon, you have to continue up to Highway 97 through Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, Fort Nelson, Watson Clay, Whitehorse. And if you want to make, make it right to Long Dock Highway, that takes you to Dawson. If you make it right in the Highway 5, Dempster Highway, that takes you up to Inuvik, Northwest Territories, and Tatotoya, Northwest Territories. I have a chance for you. I have a chance for you, Pete, to make up for uh, your Jeopardy lo loss. First of all, I got, uh, I can't find my Dennis 2 Trivial Pursuit. I'm kind of surprised. We got the Baby Boomer Edition. Are you up for the challenge? Oh, baby, well, I can't say no. All right. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out why I lost Jeopardy. <laughs> what is your name? Peter. Yeah. Okay, question two. Okay. I'm a, I like this. I like this. I could use these, these on Jeopardy. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Blue. Although it should be black. Yeah, and gold. you got it. You got it. <laughs> hey, hey, what is the capital of Assyria? The capital of Assyria. Well, the ancient Assyria, Nineveh. That's correct. Go the ahead. capital of modern Syria is Damascus. Okay. Well, okay. You ace those ones. You have one more chance here. Okay. <laughs> Joey's got the Jeopardy game. We were okay. at game ready for you, Pete. We've been warming up. Here we go. If she weighs the same as a duck, she's made of wood. What is a witch? Correct. <laughs> you aced it. You aced it. So is Madeline there? Do we did we ever get her on? Madeline's trying to connect. So uh if you're in school in Chicago, Riley, where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. I grew up in Iowa. Did you? So did you know Madeline before? Hawkeye mm -hmm. State. Ah, I see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we're cousins. Ah, see, I don't always know what's going on. That's what I <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Yeah. Iowa. My sister-in-law is from Iowa. Usually it's just the snow, like not being able to drive home. Or like one time I got stuck in an airport because it was snowing, so I couldn't go home. <laughs> How windy does it get there? Oh, really windy. Just like all the time, too. <laughs> it's not like a certain part of the year. It's just all the time. Are you in a car or something? Hello? Hey, Madeline. <laughs> Madeline. Hi. I'm in the McDonald's drive through <laughs> McDonald's, pick us up some Big Macs. <laughs> We're getting shamrock shakes. Shamrock shakes. Ooh. Yuck. <laughs> time of year. We do have uh, two shamrock shakes. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you guys uh, know Prince Dylan? Awesome. Like your nails. Madeline and Riley, cousins in Iowa. Uh, we, well, we saw Frankie's YouTube videos a while back, and we started Skyping them this summer. And we've just been Skyping ever since. And Frankie's truly amazing. To the autism community, community, he even I got his him. book too. What about what about the Bolat Bakraf? He lives in Yaktus Crush. Frankie, He's how many here. fans do you have? Ha, tell Pete how many fans you have around the world. I have so many fans around the world, every single country in the world. That means that even Bolat follows me on Twitter. Bolat Bakraf, he followed me on Twitter. Well, you're a global household name, Frankie. You've got to have what, like a hundred thousand Twitter followers? <laughs> he has a lot, Pete. Frankie, tell, tell, 
Tell tell Peter tell Pete the time when you predicted the earthquake. I did a video on Friday, October twenty first, two thousand sixteen. Three weeks later, on November thirteenth, I got a seven point eight magnitude earthquake ha actually happened, and I did really well. I was all over the news just for that. I like to introduce the Jack Casey, aka Base Guy Show. He lives in Montreal, West Island, Quebec. He runs a Base Guy Show on every Wednesday at two twenty p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, one twenty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Where Base Guy lives in Montreal, West Island. He's on the show on Mondays, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons. He plays music on Monday and Fridays. I'm on Base Guy show on Wednesday afternoons. And it means a joy. Base Guy will, will be on your show. And we have our own show now on Cable 14, right, Frankie? The Dylan yes, Frankie on Show. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. Atlantic Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and 3 p.m. Pacific Time, Cable14.com. Click live stream. Who's on this week coming up? Well, we got, we got Jerry D coming on next month. Pete there you go. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry D. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Jer Jerry D was the host of Canada's Smartest Person the year that I won it. So we, we go way back. It was like an academic decathlon, and, and I just happened to have a good night. I was, it was made for TV. So some of the challenges were, I think, friendlier to a football player than a traditional academic <laughs> setting. But I gave Jerry D a big hug right at the end after I won. Much against anyone's best judgment i gave dylan a driving lesson once so you're up at the theater yeah you're up by the theater that's right so i think i was dropping you off at the theater or picking you up we're going to do some canvassing and so i i put you in the driver's seat and had you drive me around the uh, theater parking lot and you can imagine the big you know silver city theater parking lot it's huge there's no obstacles there weren't any cars in it what safer place could i find to let dylan drive my car <laughs> i put dylan in the driver's seat I was in the passenger seat empty parking lot he decides to zero in on the one huge light pole it has us accelerating towards it i had to like literally take his leg and mash it on the brake to save our lives <laughs> we didn't hit it we did not make contact i'm wondering how hit the light pole just just had a good fright that's not bad for a driver now dylan so dylan works at the movie theater and of course it's been closed for a while with the pandemic but he's worked at the movie theater for years as well as being the tie cats equipment manager, he's got a couple of other jobs. He's a you know uh, you know regular at the movie theater, one of their longer serving staff members. So me and uh, was it Tim O'Neill or Mike Fox? Is, is Tim O'Neill another big old yeah Lemons. Tim O'Neill Columbia yeah uh, went to see him at the movie theater and we decided we were going to scam the movie theater because we saw Dylan was the one tearing the tickets that day. So we went to the automatic kiosk and we bought senior citizens discount tickets. <laughs> and then we distracted Dylan with some story about practice that day while he was tearing our tickets. So he didn't read and see that we bought the senior yeah. citizens discount tickets. <laughs> but that's the story. Any, uh, any weather predictions for this week, Frankie? It's going to okay, bring more rain in Sydney, Nova Scotia on Tuesday. More rain and showers in Vancouver, British Columbia, Victoria, British Columbia. That means more cold weather in Japan. It's going to be really hot weather in Australia, New Zealand this week. It's going to bring lots of rain in South, northern South America, like Amazon rainforest, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's going to bring really, really cold weather in Siberia. It's going to gradually warm up to March and April, May in Siberia, Russia, and up around Norway. It's going to bring the rain, snow, and things like that. And in southern Africa, it's going to bring a whole lot of rain. And there's a tropical disturbance hitting the Philippines as it currently right now. And tropical cyclone season is going to kick up in the high gear once fall starts on March 20th in Southern Hemisphere. The tail of our uh, Pineapple Express right now is coming uh, right from there. Um, who's on your show this week? Uh, we got no. Uh, they're going to be uh, on Frankie and I's show this week. We're going to. They're going to be just replays uh, until we have new episodes coming up in March. But stay tuned. We got some exciting celebrity guests coming on. Maybe Pete in season two. Maybe Pete. We'll be in season two of the Dylan Frankie show. If I'm lucky. So Riley, I was just saying, I'm you. impressed. You guys pulled from all over. We even have uh, two Iowan, Iowans. Uh, and I, I'm just re reflecting back on that. My sister-in-law's from Carroll, Iowa. Do any of you know where Carroll, Iowa is? Because no one up here has ever heard of Carroll, Iowa. Oh, yeah, we know. Yeah. And, uh, on the next interview with Alyssa, Lisa J for the next Magic School Bus in March, Joey Only will be a guest if he's not busy. I would love to. <laughs> Totally hey, Pete, do you, do you have any good advice uh, if, uh, if people want to get on Jeopardy like uh, like like me or anyone else in this room? Like, how, how do we get on Jeopardy like you did? Yeah. 
Okay, so Jeopardy has an online qualification exam they do it every year in january now they might some things might change maybe i'm not sure just after alex trebek but it, usually it's every year in january they have a few days you can select and it's a timed online test and so you you type in your answers and you try to make it through and if you score high enough they'll reach out to you and book you to come in for a live evaluation and they do live evaluations at a couple of dozen cities around North America cool. every year to find contestants from this pool of pre-qualified applicants from the online test. So the first step is the online test. Go to the Jeopardy website. There'll be a link to sign up for the test and just make sure you're ready. So I think we've just missed the, the online test for this year. So the good news is you've got about 10 months or 11 months to practice your trivia and study up for uh for, for next year. So I, I, think everyone... Craig, I think Craig would be from, from Nobono on Jeopardy. Is there still going to go be a Jeopardy? For Is there still going to be a Jeopardy? Oh, Jeopardy to her game. They're looking for a new host. Maybe so you could be the new host, P. I think, I, I, I think they're going to carry on with a new host. I haven't heard any. There's been a lot of guesses about who the new host will be. Um, they've, they've, there's even been talk they might do rotating hosts for a while till they find the new one. But remember when... Uh, Bob Barker retired from The Price is Right. And Drew Carey uh, was signed up for it. And I thought, and a lot of people thought, Drew Carey can't replace Bob Barker. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I think Drew Carey's done a great job. He's not yep. the same. They're different. And, you know, the, the show, I think part of the fun is just the sets haven't changed at all. But I'll find someone new and we'll get used to them. It just won't be the same as Trebek. I mean, Alex Trebek is a Canadian legend. He's a He's a treasure. Rest in peace. Uh, and I'm lucky, even though I didn't win, I got to go on and, and meet him. And, and that was that was pretty cool. So, Frankie, you should throw your hat in for it. You might get lucky and have a lot of meteorological questions. Uh, <laughs> you know, you get, a, you get a few categories you can run. You never know. Catch a daily double, right? Madeline, how was your McDonald's, first of all? It's Are great. And tell me about the weather right now in Iowa. Well, there was just a blizzard, so the roads are kind of bad. Um, yeah, it was, it's getting, it's getting warmer, but it was, it was like 20, 28 today, I think. So. so almost, uh, just below freezing there, I guess. I say keep staying positive. We need to keep staying positive through the pandemic. That's what we need. Like Frankie and tune into joy only every Sunday, every Sunday with the comedy weather report. Peter, thank you for coming on. Riley, thanks for coming on. Madeline, thanks for coming on today thanks, thanks for having, for having me, me. Oh, Pete, and, and i know if you go i know if you go on jeopardy again pete i think he might come in first next time i, I appreciate the vote of confidence thanks <laughs> Stella, so, thanks, not, thank not, you, thanks joey and nice to meet you riley and madeline and i gotta correct myself it wasn't carol iowa i think they lived there earlier they live in lamar's iowa now oh yeah pete, let me ask oh, you this who I'm is like fernandez who is Hernandez? I'll wonder that forever. <laughs> that was the I question. wonder why I said that. What is the number one food at the Iowa State Fair? Ooh. I don't know. Oh. Corn dogs? Yeah, corn dogs are pretty good. I think that's the number one, yeah. The, yeah, the Twinkies. We'll see you all next week here. And uh, thanks for coming on, Pete. Really nice to meet you, Madeline, Riley. All right, Frank, <laughs> you got a good week, buddy. See you later, Dylan. Have a good week. Take best care, luck. guys. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hi, Joey. How are you doing? I'm doing great so far, Joey. How was your day, Joey? I'm doing great so far. I'm doing great, Joey. How was your day? I am Fred the Bear. I live out in the woods. Joey Allen's a great guy from Wells, British Columbia. Joey, you better watch out for grizzly bears up in the mountains somewhere. See you soon. Bye for now.